Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This is Falls from Iron. I'm Gatesy. I'm joined by Steve and Andy. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of what we're here to talk about, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and please make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. So, why are we here? Well, a couple of days ago, gentlemen, as I'm sure you guys are well aware, there was some rumblings of a potential takeover that was floating around. The head of it was a guy called Philip Beard, who has connections with QPR. He's their former chief executive officer, from what I've been told. Um, mm -hmm. And there was an offer slapped on the table, by all accounts, the, the purported figure of $400 million, which was promptly rejected by... Mr. Sullivan, our esteemed majority shareholder. A few days later, Mr. Sullivan himself gave in an interview to The Athletic. Um, he broke his silence and said that one of the reasons was that um, it was rejected out of hand was that the consortium headed by Mr. Beard never produced any, never produced any proof of funds, quotes, unquotes. I'm reading directly. Now, within the last hour or two, there's been something that Henry Winter put out on Twitter. Um, he, he says here, Philip Beard of PAI Capital on his consortium's bid for West Ham United. Now, I'm going to read it directly. It's a little bit, it's, it's sort of two pages long, so please bear with me. But this is just for sort of like for context for anyone watching it that's wondering what's going on. So here we go. It is not my intention to engage in public debate on the comments made by David Sullivan last week, but upon advice, it is necessary to correct unhelpful and inaccurate statements. The current owners of West Ham United made a controversial commercial decision to move the club from its historic home at Upton Park to the London Stadium in Stratford. In my assessment and that of the consortium that I represent, that move is not fulfilling the needs of the club, its loyal fan base or the local community. There is a lot that can and should be done to improve the experience for all fans and visitors to the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. There is also a duty which we all share to the British taxpayer and to our Olympic legacy as Londoners and as is a London based consortium. In response to David Sullivan's comments about the nature and value of the bid put forward, by the consortium, I can confirm that a formal offer was made, which was in fact the figure that David Sullivan had initially asked for. Our city lawyers were instructed and David Sullivan was provided with proof of funds. We remain committed to pursuing opportunities to purchase the club. We have been actively working on this for over six months and have a strong vision for the club the London Stadium and its place within the Olympic Park as a whole. It is backed by prominent personalities in sport as well as West Ham legends who love the club and want to play a role in its development. We wholeheartedly welcome their support and hope that we will together have the opportunity to deliver the project that we have planned. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build West Ham United into a Londoners club of global importance as a key part of the broader legacy being delivered at Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. The fans and all of London deserve this. Gentlemen, mm. someone isn't telling the truth. Who's your money on? Steve? Uh, cool. Well, David Sullivan um, has got a history of a, shall we say, a negotiable relationship with the truth, hasn't he? You know, mm. let's take the Cavalio thing. Uh, oh, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit out there, wasn't it? And also, I don't know anything about Philip Beard, so I can't make a judgment on him, other than he went into QPR spent lots of uh, Tony Fernandez's money, or Tony Fernandez spent lots of his money, and QPR are in dire straits now. That that would be a concern. Um, 
I, I find the state. Do you want to talk about the statement later, or do you just want my opinion on who's lying at the moment? Whatever, whichever direction you want to go, whatever your thoughts are, Steve, lay it out there. Right. Okay. Um, for me, his statement in reply to Sullivan was very interesting because he's gone after. That wasn't a statement to just say, actually, David Sullivan, I don't agree with you. It was a statement to actually get certain parties on side, like the uh, like politicians. Oh, this stadium has got to provide a um, a profit, or it's got to be sustainable. And also for the West Ham fans, he knows that a lot of West Ham fans aren't happy about the move, so he's gone after that in his statement as well. So it presses all the buttons that are required to get people on side. Mm. Um, my concern is, I remember when the Icelandics took over, and I went, yay, we've got some people with money, and then we yep. didn't very quickly. I would want... I mean, regardless of who's telling the truth, and I think, to be honest with you, uh, both parties are painting it in the way they want it to be seen. But I just I would want assurances that they're going to do what they say, and we're not going to end up like QPR. Because for once, mm. in footballing terms, we're actually in a decent place. I know it's rare, but we are. And I don't want somebody to come in and make a complete pig's ear of that, to be honest. That's my position on it. Fair enough. Well well articulated, Steve. Andy, oh, well. your thoughts? Oh, I, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. And if it wasn't this um, consortium and who was going to do it, it will be someone else. And um, as Gio, I saw Gio um, put it in on Twitter earlier, how many times does David Sullivan get caught out? He either, little midget either goes on TalkSport to his best mate Jim Wire and yeah. open a can of worms, and he's done exactly the same thing again. Um, do I think that, 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 that this consortium will end up taking us over? No. I think this is opening, uh, opening the picture for Red Bull, personally. Now this is out in the domain that they're considering offers, in my opinion... I, I've said it. I've said it. Our next owners will be Red Bull, and I've been saying that for a number of years. And I, and, and I just I just hope that's the case. I agree with what Steve's saying. What happened to QPR? But that was Tony Fernandez, though. That was Tony mm. Fernandez's money. Is a different company, so I'm not as concerned as that. But it's more of the, in my opinion, yeah, it will be Red Bull eventually. But David Salah, they're they're just doing this to to make tactics of no money on the transfers. And I, I'm not being funny, gents. Atalanta, I think that's more of a kid's day out, so there won't be many hardcore fans there, but I am fearing this Leicester game at home, if nothing's happening. Really? I, 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 am, I am fearing it. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff. People can book the whole day off work. Yeah. Like, like, like the Tottenham game, this reminds me of the Tottenham and Chelsea game when, when the when London Stadium first opened, and this could be toxic. So they've got what is it now, 18 days to put their marker on, or this could really be toxic in my opinion. What about you, Gatesy? Well, I've got no love for Golden, Golden Sullivan. Um, I, I think they've, just over the years, they've they've said so many times about what their intentions are, and it hasn't come to pass. Now, you could argue that, oh, Maybe it's aspirational and, and they're aiming for the stars and, you know, they're, by doing so, they're getting ahead above the clouds. The, the problem is, is that when you have a 10 point plan, which is still on the club's website and you can still look at and you can decide whether they've, <laughs> you know, measured up, shall we say, to those that 10 point pledge that was put out when they first walked into the club. Um, you know, you can look at that and go... Well, very little of that, if any, has actually materialised. Why do you expect me to believe a word you say going forwards? That's that's the problem. 
but then on the flip side of the coin, there is that, well, you know, it, it, if it's too good to be true, sometimes it usually is. Mm. Um, it, it's a difficult one. Um, I'm not a businessman. I don't, I don't know how to run a business, let alone a Premier League football club. The, the, the thing is, though, that, I mean, from what I'm led to believe, this company have come in with a £400 million bid. I saw that Karen Brady, now this was admittedly two years ago, I think it was, but she was on record at saying that at that moment in time, the club was valued in their book at double that amount. Now, I appreciate that obviously COVID has, has changed the landscape and all the rest of it. But even sort of like allowing, if, if we sort of say, are we do we really think that they're going to sell for half the price? I'm, I'm not totally convinced that they would. Maybe I think they'd probably go for about five, six hundred million. But realistically, if, if you're buying a Premier League football club, do you not think that you could get a little bit more bang for your buck by buying a club that owns its own stadium mm. and has better training facilities with the best will in the world than what we've got? Do not diss the porter cabins. Leave them alone. <laughs> what have they done to you? I've got I've got some very bad memories about them porter cabins. Let me tell you. What about the, yeah. uh, the South End are copying their model, weren't they, Gates? So we saw a load of porter cabins on Friday. We did. Yes. In fact, I think I think that those porter cabins looked when we turned up at Roots all the other day. I think they looked vaguely familiar. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been um, to Roots Hall for ages. Um, you ain't just, missing uh, much. And just to add, Gate, see, even Jim White has tweeted the, the same thing what Henry Winter's done. So is Jim White turning on David Sullivan? Well, mm. now that's an interesting development. I wasn't aware of that. But, I mean, obviously, Mr. Mr. White and Mr. Sullivan are usually quite close pals. So the fact that Jim White has tweeted this on his own Twitter page does make you sort of wonder, is, you know, have has the blindfold dropped from his eyes and is he... Is he starting to realise or is, you know, I, I don't know, you know, but I would think that, you know, this that might not be something that sits well with um, Mr. Sullivan. And I, I, I've got a funny feeling that that tweet may well be deleted from his account fairly soon. We'll see. I, I mean, I read something quite interesting. If Golden Sullivan sell now, their windfall tax on it is 80 million. Mm -hmm. 100 million now the theory was that's why Sullivan isn't prepared to sell but you then get leaked out into the news that we're in desperate financial trouble and they are prepared to sell up to 40% of their combined shares yep. but keep a controlling interest in the club and yep. the thing that was holding it up was that they wanted huge personal payments because the one thing, nice I, of him. I, yeah, I will say about Sir David Sullivan, and he's been fairly consistent, is that he's greedy. He wants to make every buck he can. Yeah, he, it's just the way he operates. And I think from listening to some of the things he said about when he was a kid and selling old programs and things like that, that's his mindset. You're in business, you make every penny you can out of any situation now typical businessman's mentality in fairness yeah how many billions you need when you're 71 i've got no idea but obviously he feels he needs some more um the other thing i do think this does and there and claret and hugh i mean love more hate them i have come out and it's been reported in other places as well that we're now working with two players to sign them now OK, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. I'll believe it when I see it. I mm. do think this puts quite a lot of pressure on Sullivan to actually produce something in this transfer window. If he doesn't, he's going to find his position very difficult. I'm going to the uh, Betway Cup. I'm taking my son and a couple of my son's friends because they've just finished their GCSEs. And I said, come on, lads, we'll go... All West Ham sports says, come on, lads, I'll take you. That's on me. And uh, they're all quite excited about it. But I will be interested to see, A, how many people are there, 
because I don't think there's a lot. Because I keep getting emails from the club, you know, mm-hmm. you're a season ticket holder, please, but basically, please buy some tickets. For me yeah, wake up. you can have as many as you want. Yeah, exactly. And secondly, I will be interested to see what the reaction of the fans are to to what happens. You know what comes out. You know, have we got new players and stuff? And the other yeah. big thing, the other big uh, elephant in the room, if you like, is Declan. What is Declan's position? Well, you now know? you've actually got something added to that. You've now got the rumblings with uh, Mr. Sue Fowl in in the background that's uh, un- unravelled in the last day or two. I know, and it's, it's. I am absolutely sick and tired of West Ham being in the press for all the wrong reasons. You know, in all the years I've supported them, yeah, we've done things badly. <laughs> you know, that is just the West Ham way, unfortunately, mm. by ownership. But if you like, at least it was done quietly and sensibly. I know social media doesn't help all this, but... <sighs> you know, David Sullivan's best move on this would have been to keep his mouth shut. Because yeah. now, yeah, I know he can't do that, but now it's all getting aired in public. And you just think, we've, re- we've just come off a season where we've come six, we've qualified for the Europa League, we're trying to get new players in, we're trying to strengthen. You've got to give David Moyes credit. He did a sterling job last season, and I think he'll do one next season. And then we've got this thrown in, which just takes away from what we're trying to do as a team on the pitch. And a very cynical side of me says, this is to distract us from the lack of transfers. Mm. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So I think the whole thing is ugly. I think that's the best word I can use for it. The whole thing strikes me as being very ugly and in some ways quite contrived. But I, I wait and see because I've got no evidence to back any of that up. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts, Milesy, on um, you know the the lack of signings? You know the 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 two at the top of the tree apparently looking to sell forty percent of their combined stake whilst retaining a controlling in- interest. In all the other factors. What what are your thoughts? I'm not worried yet. I'm not going to lie. Okay. We had that sort of discussion in the car, didn't we, on Friday? And yeah. A bit at the stadium. Do I think they're working on players? Yes. Um, do I think... In my opinion, that they're going to run the risk of Moyes going. I, if, I, I could see that. I could see you Moyes think it's, because... it's Golden Sullivan that are the problem, not Moyes? Because there's a there's a, um, a narrative that says that it's, it's Moyes that's the one that's holding it up. He's the one that's, you know, it's the, it's the dithering Dave tag. That's, that's the reason for the problem. Do you, do you not buy that one? No, because apparently they had a meeting at the end of the season to discuss transfer targets. And then they had another meeting on Thursday and Friday. Um, sorry, Jake, if you're watching, that's complete and utter bullshit. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with it. Why would a manager, a manager in March would be thinking no matter what, even if we didn't finish in Europe, He'll be going. I want Tammy Abraham, for example. I want. I want. I want someone. It, 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 it's 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 mad. But um, the West Ham way made a very funny point, and well, not hmm. a funny point. Can you imagine if this happened? It's been announced that the Hammer of the Year will be presented on the first home game against Leicester. Can you imagine okay. if Declan Rice has won it and he's not a West Ham player? That would be funny, wouldn't it? Ooh. Ooh. I'm not trying to be negative, but can you imagine it? That would just sum our season up. Yeah, Goodness. I, I mean, person, personally, I've, and I've said this to Gatesy, I've not been happy with the way Declan's conducted his side of this. Now, I'm not saying it's Declan per se. Uh, it it might be his, well, I'm pretty sure it's his agent. But it struck, it just struck me, because you guys know what I do for a living. Uh mm. It struck me that it's been a very long time since anybody has said no to them. Just turned around and said, no, you're not having it your own way. 
if you want to go, it's 100 million. If we get that offer, you can go. Until then, you're our player. Because what I don't want to happen with the Declan thing is because we had that journalist come out and say, well, West Ham will have to consider offers over 60 million. I don't want us to be disadvantaged. Yes, we're going to lose Declan, but we've got to do what Levy does and play hardball and say, you can have him, but that is the price. Mm. Because we need to invest in West Ham. You want him to invest in your side, fine. But that's what it's going to cost you to do it. Mm. And that to be made really clear to... Declan's representatives and personally I wouldn't throw another contract at him because it starts looking desperate yeah there's your yeah. pay rise that's what we've offered you you're on a contract if you want an improved contract you sign it if you don't and you want to go that's equally fine but it's 100 million and you're not going until then and then uh, that's that's how I'd handle it. I'd actually play hardball because everybody's running around going, we've got to keep him, we've got to keep him. Which is mm. a bit daft anyway, because he's going to go at some point. So, what are we but, achieving? But isn't that, a part, isn't that a part of the board's plan though, Steve? Like you said, they're already asset stripping as it is. They have that off their book. That's, that, that could potentially have 50, 60 million in their own pocket before they sell up. Like, it's... Uh, that's, that's, true. What I'm more con- that's what I'm concerned about. I don't want. Do you know? Do you know what really concerns me, boys? Is that if it is yeah. Gold and Sullivan that are holding up the transfers, I'm fairly confident that Moyes got certain assurances, certain, absolutely, you know, pledges that he would have been made by Gold and Sullivan before he put pen to paper. Because don't forget, there was it. It there was a bit of you know talk about is he going to Everton and all the rest of it. So, you know, I think he knows that his stock is quite high. And if he left West Ham, he could he could pretty much walk into any club in the Premier League and possibly a good number across Europe, in, in fact. But I think that if he's been given certain assurances on, on transfer budgets and, and this, that and the other, and it's now looking like that basically he's been given a load of bullshit, I wouldn't be at all surprised. I really wouldn't blame him if he walked and then sued the club for constructive dismissal. Just like Alan Kirbishley did when, um, obviously, Anton Ferdinand got sold to Sunderland and they were like, oh, you know, it's because we ain't got a pot to piss in, but that's the last signing, blah, blah, blah. And then right before the transfer window ended, what happened? George McCartney was shunted out the door and he went, nah, up with this, I will not put and off he went he sued the club for constructive dismissal he won that's that's the doomsday scenario for me because you know we lo- we would lose the manager that got a sixth last season and we've then got to start all over again uh, yeah just an absolute yeah. nightmare scenario for me that's that's the one that I'm just like but do you know what if he did it I you know I, I honestly couldn't blame him I really couldn't blame him if he did it I'd, I'd jump in here and say I actually think it probably is Moyes holding the transfers up, and I'll tell you why. My brother-in-law is an Everton supporter. I still get on well with him, you know, it's it's not that serious. But uh, his comment about Moyes was always, was always, and it was the Everton fans' big complaint. Can I just he, can I just jump in just real quick there, Steve, just to clarify this point that Rob's making? The forty percent isn't the four hundred million. The four hundred million is is for the entirety of Gold and Sullivan shares, from what I understand. Um, the forty yeah. percent is that um, they're looking to get a little bit of extra dough into the club at selling forty percent of their combined share, sort of thing, while still retaining a a controlling interest that's not that price has not been set so the the 400 million and the 40 percent they're two different things rob sorry carry on steve yeah my brother-in-law's comment and it's you know we go up there quite a lot because obviously they my brother and sister-in-law live up there and all the everton fans i speak to it's oh the thing about Moises, is he just dithered so much in the transfer market and all the time he was there that was their complaint about him so what's happening now is not unique to West Ham it's 
it, it seems to be historically the way Moyes does things. Mm. And it infuriates the living daylights out of everybody, but that's who Moyes is. And so I like to think that it's probably Moyes doing his due diligence and then some, you know. Uh, so... but, also, but also, I've got to say, Karen Brady's valuation of West Ham at 800 million is absolutely nuts. You know, as I say, in fairness, know, that was two years ago. That was pre-COVID. In fairness, yeah. So it may I mean, have it may have been changed since then. But and my other point is, if they are saying David Sullivan asked for four hundred million, we offered him four hundred million, and then he said no. It gives you, if that's true, that gives you a really good insight into David Sullivan and how he operates. You know, you can't trust, take him on his word. And that, mm. that it, it doesn't surprise me, but I just think, do you really want that sort of person running your football club? I don't. But we've had that for the last, what, 11, 12 years now. Oh, great. That's the guy that's, that's that's been running it. I know that obviously yeah. he's got David Gold by his side and, Karen Brady's in charge of the of the day to day running, but let's not muck about. David Sullivan's the majority shareholder. What he says goes. Yep. Yep. Agree. Oh. I, I I don't think it's Moyes. Moyes would have had his targets. Moyes would have had his target. He had his target in January. He said he wants his striker. They said he wasn't available. Like unless something's dramatically. See, that's where that's what I'm finding more frustrating. They said that we're not got a striker in January because we're going to get him in the summer. I thought that would have been done on July the first, pre-agreed, straight in, pre-season under the yeah. Belt. See this, I, I don't know. The, the I thing wonder was, if it's a little bit of the dithering Dave scenario. I think that that could be an element of it, but I don't believe that's the entire reason. If you want me to be brutally honest, I don't think we've got a pot to piss in. Yeah, I agree. No, maybe not. They said the squad. They said the squad. They said the sorry, Steve. They said the squad today. So we've got three goalkeepers. Um, obviously Fabianski, Randolph, and Martin. Eight defenders, like who are not under twenty, uh, not uh, um, under. I'm not including under twenty threes. Eight midfielders and one striker. That's all we've got mm. for a twenty five man Premier League squad. Mm. Yeah. I rest yeah. my case. You know what I mean. No, no, you, you can't argue with that, Andy. I mean, you're dead right. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to the season ticket. Uh, sorry, this season, because it's the first time I've been a season ticket holder in any sh way, shape, or form since I won with my dad in the seventies. And this year, I'm taking my boy. You know, and from that point of view, I am thoroughly looking forward to going to see the Hammers play. I haven't been to a lot of live games over that period of time. What I am not looking forward to is the farce that our club becomes so very quickly. There was an offer made, and before we know where we are, it's uh, they're slinging mud at each other in the press. Mm. Eh? You know, and that that really <clears throat> annoys me. That how did it get from there? to there so quickly well basic reason is Sullivan's come out and said what he said and the other yeah. side have gone oh, no not proof of funds away with that. well yeah that's it I mean they, they said at the beginning of that statement that I read out that they've obviously put their side of the thing out with you know their representatives being on board with that statement being public knowledge so yeah. as I say somebody's lying you know, David Sullivan has said that there was no proof of funds. They've turned around and said David Moore, David Sullivan had proof of funds. Somebody is lying. This is not a misunderstanding. Someone is lying. Uh, the, the, th the comment I read, which I think is very telling, was they wouldn't have put that statement out unless they were 100% sure they could back it up. Because look how quick... David Sullivan is to sue. If there was any inaccuracies in Correct. that statement, David Sullivan would be all over it like a rash. Yep. 
And I yep. think that's why I tend to fall on the side of David Sullivan not being up front without it. See, see, mm. that's what I think as well, Jen. So the way I see it is, uh, even if it's a point, is it a point of interest, it's called, what they're saying, or, or, or the proposal, that has to be yeah. in writing. This could get sour. Like, they, they could come out in two days. If one of them comes out and goes, it's bullshit again. They could pr- obviously hide certain shit. They could probably send something to West Ham United London or whatever we've been yeah. called officially on company's house with a proposal. Like, this is just open the can of worms. And we, we seriously, like I said, we need... It, it, this has happened at the wrong time. This has happened really at the wrong time. This is... We should be worrying about transfers. And instead, David Sullivan's probably on the phone to his lawyer saying, can you know, like a dodgy, dodgy Dell boy, can you get me out of this mess when you call the lawyer? Like Phil Mitchell on EastEnders, Sophie. You know, but he's the one that's that? caused the mess. This I know, the thing. but no, he, just... He's caused the mess. If he'd yeah, just kept his mouth shut, all he needed to say was, you know, that there was a bid that come in. It, it didn't tick all the boxes for us. We move on. That's all he needed to say. He's actually on record and saying there was no proof of funds, quotes, unquotes. And then and they've if, obviously turned around and said he had proof of funds. Someone's please. lying. And you see, if there was proof of funds, the people who put the bid in, if they can prove that, they can. Uh, David Sullivan's in a position where he's actually committed libel against them, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. And, you know... <laughs> the self phrase, he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. David oh, Sullivan yes. will... I mean, look what happened with Sky Sports. Fair enough. Sunday Supplement got it wrong. <laughs> you know, in, in their own way. But they had to sit there and apologise in public. And they had to make quite a humiliating calm climb down when... If, they'd just, if Sullivan had just accepted an apology and they and they'd turn around and said, look, we got that wrong. But before he, before they knew where they were, they had lawyers involved. Well, hmm. guess what? He might have put him, himself in a position if he pursues this and if he has lied, where suddenly he finds the shoes on the other foot and it's not as comfortable as he thinks it is. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think... Um, I don't know. It's hard to describe how. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was laughing at that. That comment. Um, <laughs> the, I I agree with what everyone's like. Everyone's like saying the valid valid points, but uh, I think we're not, we're not going to get the transfers what we really want until they've gone. The amount of enemies yeah. what they've made. The only sort of team who wants to do business with us are West Brom and Sp- uh, and Sparta Prague. Was it Slavia Prague? Sorry, my mind. Slavia, I think. Yeah, Slavia. Yeah. yeah, they're the only ones who want to do business with us. Like, if, if it's getting to that, then it, it's kind of a worrying situation. I think we can start a, start fresh. But I don't know. It's, it, it's just the same shit every year. We were saying this, Gatesy, weren't we, in the car? When, yeah. whenever, whenever, there's, whenever there's a transfer window, things are... The fans are getting a bit restless. They've got something else to talk about. What's it going to be next? Are we are we going to sell blimmin' Connor Coventry for cheap to a Brentford, for example? I'm just giving. So like what Grady done? I know Grady turned mm-hmm. out to be eighteen million pound, but that backlash of selling someone to take yeah. a backlash of no one coming in. I'm just worried now that I didn't realise that the transfer window shuts on the thirty first. I thought we actually shut them for for the first game of the season. So we have got a bit of leeway, but I agree. We, on the way we're looking at Newcastle, we're not even going to have to fill a bench. Again, the thing is, we, if you look at the the, the teams, as I, and I said this to you, Milesy, on um, Friday when we went to the South End game, if you look at the teams that we are direct competitors with, and I know there are going to be people that will maybe disagree with me, but I, as far as I'm concerned, our direct competition, our teams like Aston Villa. Everton, Leicester City, teams yeah. in that realm, possibly Leeds United even. Um, that's our direct competition. They've already made signings. Some signings they've made are players we were linked to. For example, Junior Fippo, who went to Leeds. Patson Dacker, who went to Leicester. So they've strengthened. Now, I know 
yes, we've made three signings. It's not we haven't not made a signing. We made three signings, but they're kids. They're ones for the future. They're promising, but you're never not quite sure how it's going to pan out. For for every Declan Rice that you sign from another club, you know you're you're going to have another Savio or Gavin Holligan. You know, a player that comes in with a lot of potential, a lot of promise, never makes it. And, you know, years down the line, no one really remembers them. So I'm I'm just really concerned that here we are. Was it the 27th of July? The season kicks off in just about two weeks now. Two weeks? Eight, yep. eight, eight days, I think, yeah. I'm, like I say, I'm not panicking yet because I know that the transfer window remains open until, is it the 31st of August? Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not panicking, but I am very, uh, a couple of days ago, I said I was mildly concerned. I'm very concerned now. And with every day that passes where we've not made any progress in the transfer market, I grow even more concerned. And if the season kicks off, and we've not made a signing even then. Now I'm proper shitting myself. I I, I agree, Gatesy, and um, I, I I was sort of. Do you remember when we done the? Uh, it's just come to my mind because Tom just mentioned the, the tier list. What we done? Joe, we had a manager. Yep. And it's like I mentioned free transfers. Mm-hmm. We've mentioned another player, Ryan Bertrand. We're having a yep. great addition to the squad. Gone to Leicester, yeah. another rival. Um, there's there's not plenty much... of frees that you could get that would be good value. I mean, some of them we wouldn't be able to have afforded. I mean, but, you know, Jan Luigi Donnarumma. Now, all right, like I say, we'd have never been able to afford him because his wages would have been astronomical. But what I'm saying is, is that surely we could have made a free signing that we could have signed on a decent wage structure. Um, there's plenty of players that were out there. I, I did, I had a look months ago um, for players who were going to be out of contract in the summer. There was one that we was linked with um, and his name was Nikola Maksimovic, 29 year old Serbian center back from Napoli. And we, you know, the rumor was that we'd signed him on a pre-contract agreement to come in on the 1st of July. As I say, it's now the 27th. He isn't a West Ham player. So I'm guessing that we can safely say that that was, um, that wasn't quite on the level. But, you know, we could have made signings. We surely could have got in freebies to yeah. bolster the ranks. You know, I mean... Andros Townsend, just for me, Andros yeah. Townsend would have been a perfect. He's got European experience. Uh, they mentioned it on West Ham Fan TV on Friday night, and I agree with exactly what they say. Yeah. Good to we're, come not even the making, we're not even making signings that are squad players. We're not even oh. doing that. We've brought in no one. No one. Like I say, aside from free... Players Thierry Nevers, Pierre Equa, and Armstrong Okoflex. Other than that, we've brought in no one, and it is the 27th of July. We kick off in just a little over two weeks. I am rather concerned, and now there's all this going on. Yeah, this this is just typical West Ham. We've just finished sixth, for goodness sake, sixth in the Premier League. I can't, you know, I can't think of too many other times a team has finished sixth. And goes into the following season in such turmoil and chaos. It's just, but if there's one team that it would be, do you know what? If I had to put money on it, I'd say, do you know what? That would probably be West Ham. And here we are. Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong's the one. Adam Armstrong's the one to go and get. No one's still, no one's still caught him. So why aren't we not there? Frustrating. Mm. So I, who's that guest? Did I? Well, you'll have to wait and we'll have to wait and find out. If he Ooh. if he comes through. Ah oh, no. <sighs> Try again. Oh. Try again. Try again. And then and then See, and then he can he can surprise you. Ooh. See, I I ha- I have a dream in the words of Martin Luther King, where one day West Ham is run properly. You know, in the fifty <laughs> odd years I've cool. been supporting them, it's always been a mess. At one level or another, and what frustrates me is, 
shouldn't be searching. <laughs> <laughs> what frustrates me is if we've been run properly, we'd be a really solid competitive club. And it is just continual mismanagement. And that's that's the problem. I remember my dad, who was, you know, went over in the 60s, 70s. And, he's, and I remember him saying to me not so long ago, where did all the money go? You know, you'd, hit, you'd look around the stadium, there'd be at least 35,000 in there, and the official attendance would be 27,000. Mm. So where did the other 8,000 what happened to the other 8,000? Yeah, we, we, we know where that money went, don't we? Yeah, we do. And I'm sick and tired of our club being run as uh, a financial asset for someone else. You know, <clears> it's and it's interesting that there was all this fluff and, oh, we're going to keep hold of Declan, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Mm. As soon as the season ticket renewal window closed, everything went quiet. Funny that. Yeah, I, yep. I, I, odd, wasn't it? So, yeah, mm. I don't have any love for gold. Uh, well, I certainly don't have any love for Sullivan. I just think Goldie's, uh, you know, he is a genuine supporter and cares. But I think, so with all due respect to David Gold, is I, th I think he's just he's just an accessory after the fact. Like I say, yeah. the guy that holds the the power is David Sullivan. David Gold. Yeah. He obviously contributes an amount of, of money to the to the sort of like the table, if you will. But the real power, the kingmaker, is David Sullivan. Let's not no, talk about the kingmaker is Mousy because Mousy's in the building. <laughs> Mousy's in the building. Ra ra ra. Chicka chicka chicka. La la la. What up, Gatesy? What up, Steve? How y'all doing, man? Evening, Peach, Peach, how much? How, you doing? how much have you seen? What's that? How much have you been? Have you um, caught up with? Do you know all the ins and outs of the proposed know, takeover and, and the statement that they come out with? I know, Bredrin, Bredrin, I know all the ins and outs, Doc. I know Sue Foul is getting played like a two foul. Like I think that's just made up. I think the takeover thing, four hundred million. Uh, they want like what over eight hundred million or something. Yo, oh my days. We need new owners, man. End of day. We need new owners, man. So are we, are we gonna get them though, Peach? That's the thing. I mean, you know, they they want depends upon what you believe. Four hundred yeah. million pounds has been rejected, apparently yeah. because they had no proof of funds, but the consortium yeah. have said that's a load of bollocks. We produced proof of funds and yeah. you know, it was rejected out of hands for reasons best known to Mr. Sullivan. So, somebody's lying. What's going oh. on? No, no, they're 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 all lying and like bacon. They're frying like they're 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 fried slices, dog. Like double dipped fried slices, dog. Like I I I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. I think their antics are absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, you got Sue Fowl that came and signed a three-year contract and had this much money, but you've seen his worth. So step it up. Give the man, like, give, give, give the man, like, like something for, like, being the best, one of the best right backs in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I am, um, like I said, I'm worried, but it, it is what it is. It, it, it is what it is, Malsey, and it's typical West Ham. That's the problem. And it's, you know, I, from, for I me, it's a I'm not for words, mate. It's just a distraction. What is that music? Not me. I don't know if that's me. Is that me? Was that it may back? well. I don't. It's gone. It was yeah. like, a, like a ringtone or something. Very musical. <laughs> I know, I know that was that was Titch. That was Titch getting a hold of me. Me and Titch were talking. Big up Hammers fans ah. United. Big up for it to mine. Trust me, as always. Big up Steve. Big up Miles. You how you mean? But yeah, no, that was Titch ringing me. We, me and him are talking. We're talking two things, dog. Things that things are getting like big. We're talking two things, dog. Mm. Straight up. Man. You're not going to take over a Premier League football club anytime soon, are you? No, I'm going to take over the world, dog. How do you mean? 
<laughs> so, I mean, Peach. Yes, sir. Are we are we, are we going to make a signing before the season kicks off? In your opinion, if so, where's it coming I'm from? Slipping, I'm slipping hope so, man. It's like, scary, I, isn't it? It, it? it it is very it is very scary. Um, it, it's very scary. Like, yeah, no, it's very scary. But I heard X West Ham employees saying that we're close to um, Pereira. And Phil Jones for free, no thank you. But like, look what look what Moyes did with Craig Dawson. You never know. Like, yeah, yeah. Never it, it know. Like, I'm I'm not a fan of Phil Jones. I wasn't a fan of Luke Shaw. But homeboy lit up the 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 Euros. Like he was the best left back in the world. Like it's it's mad. It's mad, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what 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 do you think? Do you think do you think new signings are going to come in, or do you think it's just like I I, for me? I I'll be honest with you. The the more time ticks on, the more yeah. I I think that that stuff that was put out a month or two ago that they reckoned Moyes would have eighty five million to spend. I think that that was on the basis of them getting, and I, I think I'm pretty sure that if you go back, you'll find I'm on record as saying it. It was very likely on the basis of them, Golden Sullivan, getting the money for the, yeah. that they thought they would get for the players that they wanted rid of, which I believe yeah. to be Anderson, Lanzini, and Yarmolenko. Yeah. Well, Anderson's basically gone for nothing. Really, yeah. Um, yeah. Yarmolenko is still a West Ham player, so is Lanzini. Like, well, it, it, we, it's, it's mad. that 20 million pounds was apparently banked, but I, I, I do wonder whether you know whether it's COVID or whatever the reason is that for whatever reason that 20 million quid has fallen down the back of the sofa, it's it's yeah. fallen down the drain. I don't know where it's gone, but. I I seriously doubt that we've got the money that David Moyes was, if not promised, but it was alluded that he might have, and that David Sullivan is now sort of like putting his hands in his pockets, pulling his pockets out, and going, "Oh, I'm I'm skint, mate. I'm skint." I tell you what, I'll have why, a word with Will hold on, hold on. Why would he sign that contract? Why would he sign that contract? This, like this. Now that's what I said earlier, Peach. The lads will tell you this is this is what concerns me, because if David Moyes is the type of man that I believe he is, and he's yep. been given certain assurances that we're going to give you X amount of pounds to sign players in the transfer window, and that doesn't come to pass. What really concerns me is that David Moyes wouldn't shock me if he l walked out on West Ham and sued the club for constructive dismissal, just like Alan Kerbishley did back in the day. It yeah, really wouldn't shock that. me. And do you know what? I if I was yeah. in his shoes, I wouldn't blame him one bit. Well, when I I'd back man. him up. When I hold him, man. Straight up. Man. Right. So everyone in the chat as well. We, we said we weren't going to do uh, transfers, but for the first game of the season at Newcastle, everyone in the chat as well, we'll go around the room. How many transfer, how many signings are going to be done before the first game of the season against Newcastle away? Who wants to go mm. first? Mm. Big up, Lee. I think, yeah, I reckon two, Pereira and Phil Jones. I reckon that's who we'll have. Well, Jones is a free signing, isn't he? Exactly. Good God! <laughs> yeah, hey? I think we'll have, I think we'll have Pereira. Peach is still thinking. I think we'll have <laughs> Lingard, Pereira, and that's all I can think. You of think right Lingard and Pereira? Interesting. Lingard and Pereira and Adama Traore. I'm dreaming, okay. but imagine what? Oh, I'd love Traore. I agree with Tom. I'm going two. I reckon yeah. two. And yeah. when I say signings, I mean players that we've paid a transfer fee for. I don't yeah. include free, free, free transfers in that. I think it will be two players that we have paid a transfer fee for. There may be yeah. other signings that we make that are freebies, 
but I think there'll be two that we've shelled out dough for on a transfer fee. Walshy reckons zero. <laughs> I love it. Do you know what? I, hope, I hope you're wrong, Walshy, but um, you know what? Zero, it really zero, wouldn't zero. shock me. Um, it really zero. wouldn't shock me. Harry Kane again, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking the piss, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I Do think... Turn your old girl as well, dog. How do you mean? <laughs> I I can see I can see Johnson, and I think we'll pay like three or four million for him because of the six million over Grady. I yeah. can see him coming in. And my last one is it may be a bit. I can still see Tammy Cup being there on the first game of the season. I I seriously can. I and you're gonna you're gonna be surprised because apparently City are not interested. Kane's gonna go Chelsea. Oh, I cannot see him going at Chelsea. No. Uh, he will. He'll want to stay. In, uh, I bet he stays in London. He'll stay in London. If if Chelsea offer 160 million, what they're going to put? Harland said he's going to. He's, he's laughing at the interest, so Harland's not going to come. So right. I can see. I can see Kane going to Chelsea. So when did City come out and say they weren't interested? Because so I thought. We were... I mean, I'm not up to speed on that one, but I thought it was more. They, they said the 160 million. They they said they'll never pay over 100 million pound for a player. Wow. Really? Wow. That's not official. That's right. Rumors. What's been floating around? I'm not saying I'm. Don't don't sue me, people. But that's what I've been hearing. No, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> the words and pictures written. We're going to have no signings for the Newcastle game, but might have some in what remains of the transfer window. Oh mate, that, that, uh, that, that's what that's what John Smith from Talk Sports said, isn't it? He was like, he's gonna have David Sullivan on, who's a fantastic man, which is bollocks. But like, we're gonna have <laughs> David Sullivan on, and he's gonna explain why West Ham are not making any signings this summer. It, it, it like, it, why would Moyes <laughs> wait so long to sign a new contract to hear this bad news? I don't get it. I, like. Yo, owners, step up, man. Like, you're running a football club, man. Step up, man. It pisses me off, man. Yep. Thing is, thing it's, is... it's same old, same old, though, isn't it? We, yeah. We've seen this before, and we'll we'll see it again, I'm sure, before they bugger off. I, yep. I tell you what, though, something that occurred to me is you do see Sullivan's mentality towards all this, because if he actually thought... He was going to get significant funds for Anderson. Everybody could see we were we weren't going to get anything of significance for Anderson. But Sullivan, gen if he genuinely believed we were, then it shows you how detached he is from really seeing what's in front of him. Uh, mm -hmm. And that that's a bigger worry in many ways than anything else, because from what I understand, you know. From looking at him, he he overvalues his assets and undervalues other people's, and there doesn't yeah. seem to be any air of realism in the middle. Yeah, you know, Jack Wiltshire, <laughs> classic. <isn't> it? <laughs> uh, it, it take it takes a lot of skill actually to oh. sign a player for over forty million and then sell him back to the club we signed him from three years later for three. That, mm. That's quite extraordinary yeah. business. But if he and just to pick, thought, just saying that, just it's quite interesting. As you've said that, James's comment there, Sullivan's a businessman. I, I'd, wait, I'd actually say on that base with what you've just said there, Steve, he's not a very good businessman. Well, he's good at Pong. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't comment. I've never seen any of his films. Never, honestly, never. If, if everyone, no. everyone says that COVID's ruined Oxford Street. You can imagine how many knocking shots there are on the empty Debenhams and House of Fraser <laughs> and, and all that. Like, be doing up. So he, he's definitely getting some money somewhere. But no, absolutely no. But. <laughs> On a serious note, I can see four players coming in in total, and I can see I, I, I can see Oxley Chamberlain and Nat Phillips from Liverpool coming in, but by the end of the window as well. That's before 
I believe. Hey, and, 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 and Andy, what about what about the youngsters we signed? Like the boy from Chelsea, the boy from Celtic, like Alves. Like, what 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 do you think about? And then the academy players like Ashby, Langello, like Baptiste, Delish, like. Do you think that's maybe where like Moyes is going, like from the youth? Uh, like, what do you think? The the one thing you can never say from Moyes and is he never he, he don't play youngsters. He does. Rooney, Rooney, yeah. he gave Rooney his debut. He gave yeah, um, other play, yeah. other play other players their debut. So didn't he give De- Declan Moyes... Rice his debut? I'm sure he did, didn't he? I oh, know that was Slav. That was Slav. Yeah. But but, yeah, but 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 Moyes was heavily involved in his development. I'm not saying mm. Slav never yeah. had an involvement, but um, obviously it was Moyes' idea to put him in midfield. But me and Gatesy, like I said, me and Gatesy are going to try and attend a, a, a lot more under 23 games. But I'm mm. not saying South End are a conference side, but the the, the youngsters coming through, especially ha- Ashby, he's got a great future, and I just hope that, yeah. that, that that is that is with West Ham and um, yeah. Um, Who's it was the other one? Longello, isn't it? Longello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's bad. I, I, say, I, I was impressed with Equa as well in central that's mid. Cool. I thought he looked. Hey, Peach, Peach, have you, you should see. Yeah, the, where's you your know? local, mate? I'm just asking for a friend. Where's your local? <laughs> My local? I got many no, local no, no, no. Rob, Rob Singleton. He's just saying his local pub closed and it's been turned into a quotes massage no, parlor. No, 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 no. I, I got like. Like like downtown where I live, dog. There's honestly like there's like three locals, but one shut down, so now there's two locals. That's it. Aye, aye. Mm-hmm. But no, I think um, uh, yeah, uh, Equa he, he's a lump peach. I don't know if you've seen him play, but we saw him in the flesh, yeah. and he he, he, mm-hmm. he looks a to and because I'm left footed we as well. Just- Marzi, just just bring your attention oh, to Ken's point there. We was footy? we was talking yeah, about this, wasn't we? Dog. Those are the best players in the world. I ain't even playing with you, Salah, Messi, all the yo, yo, left footed like, like my father, left footed, left footed players are the illest players in the world, man. I don't business. And Aqua yeah. looks dope, tidy, very composed. But what about forcing? Where did he come from? He came like out from the sky in a bubble that landed. Like at West Ham, I thought he looked absolutely magic, man. Or in Golden County, Kante, sorry, magic. But no, um, yeah, sorry, sorry, um, yeah, Kent, we were talking about this. I was me and Gatesy, we were going to go to um, uh, what's it called? Crawley, Crawley, Crawley. yesterday, but, but it was a Monday, and the time we both finished work was a little bit late. But we did have a look at the schedule, and I want to see. Because they're playing older shots on Friday night at the training yeah. ground, so we're going to see if yeah. we can go to them. But Kent, we we'll definitely link up, mate. We we'll definitely want to go to the um, the the pizza trophy. Hopefully, get a Papa John's on the way just to lie on the stomach. Maybe, 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 maybe a bit of Domino's, maybe, you know, Pizza Hut. Like you know, I have I have some of that. My 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 cousins are Crowley supporters still, man. Like yo, I've never been to Crowley Town, man. Like been there many times still. But it's like, yo, signings, like, yo, I don't get it, man. Uh, it's, <laughs> it no. thanks, thanks, Pete. That's very kind of you to say so. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Breaking news. <laughs> well, it's not breaking. It broke an hour ago. A, lady, on, a, surprise on, name on, a surprise name on West Ham's radar for a potential fullback target. He's 36 uh, year old Burnley defender Bill Bardsley. Oh, no. Is that for real? Get lost. Get lost. Who reported it? Are you playing with me? Are we going to sign like a 36 year old, like, wow. old Phil Bardsley? 36, yeah. And it, his name is Mike McGrath and he's a football reporter for the Daily Telegraph and he's got 42k followers. So he's not, he's not a bullshit like thingy. Mm, God. I ain't buying that. That is I ain't ridiculous. That, man. That, no, that's stupid. If that is, that's if that is what happens, stupid. then... Oh, yeah. I, I, I just, that's like, that's, that's, that's like, like we signed Ter- Teddy Sarian back in the day. and Yo, Sarian is ill. He has a pedigree that, that is brilliant. But it's like, he was old when we signed him. And I thought those days were over. Like, I know Moyes wants to balance the squad. Seemingly with not. Experience, but 
No, 37-year-old Barnes? No, thank you. No, thank you. I, I'd on. suggest Move that on. sounds like a that sounds like a Sullivan special to me. That does not you know, many. given that given that Moyes is trying to implement yep. the Red Bull model yep. and go away yep. from signing yep. pensioners in football terms, which Barsley is. He might have been a half decent player once upon a time. One hundred percent. That was that was a while ago. That yep. was a while ago. Yeah. That's that those days are past. I mean, jeez. Like Gacy, Gacy, I'd like, like, like to know why, who his why, agent why, is. Why, I bet you it's Will like Salthouse. Christian Daly back in the squad, dog. Oh. Like, like, let's bring Christian Daly back in the squad. Like, basically, Sorry. that's what that is. That's not Sorry, D- Jeff, Jeff Hurst is still knocking around. Did yeah, anyone see what room? Up. Let's sign him up. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Talking of signings, what did you see Andy? what thing you done? Did you hear what Rooney done for Derby? No, no. So no, that, that, I, heard that, Rooney, I heard what Rooney did the other night, dog. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you that as well. But no, um, so th- th- they've took a break and they've gone to a Surrey to, to get away for, for, for all the thing because they've only got nine fit players. Two of them are goalkeepers for the start of the season. So they went to Surrey. Rooney, Rooney, turn, Rooney played in. Rooney played in five aside. Yeah, and injured their best player, and he's out now for two months. Oh wow! Oh no! And Rooney's retired oh. himself, isn't he? Yeah. Oh wow! That is ridiculous. That is disgusting. I'll tell you what. If but if that is right, then we're looking at a thirty-six-year-old Phil Bardsley. Jesus Christ! No, thank you, Barnsley. No. no, I can't see it. To be honest, I really can't. Well, good call. Well, that would be. Well, I mean, I know Sullivan's got a knack for it, and he proves it time and time again. But that really would be taking the 12 bore out and shooting yourself in the foot, wouldn't it? Good God, I mean, yeah, just a Sullivan little bit. Even Sullivan must be able... Even Sullivan uh, must be able to see that that would be a... Oh, that would be such a bad move. I mean, the thing is, when, yeah, we, got Teddy, when we got Teddy Sheringham, yeah. he'd come from being a world-class player and he could still finish. Phil Barsley's <laughs> never been as good as Teddy Sheringham was. No, oh, honestly, strength. No, that's and, and the thing is, it, it, you know, the thing that really frustrates me is, like I say, we finished sixth. We were yep. what two points off of a Champions League position. Yep. We should be yep. going into this. We should be going into yep. this season with our hearts filled with optimism, with yep. you know all sorts of you know dreams, aspirations of you know we could potentially do this. We could sign this player. We could do this. We're going into it, and we're literally sort of like going, "What the hell is going on? What we're, what we're is going, going on?" We're, we're going into it on a dinghy, and we should be going into it on like a yacht, but we're not going into it on a yacht. And you know what? The man them who who run the club, they have yacht money, and it's like they're not they're not spending it on a yacht. They're spending it on like a, a, a little dinghy. I'm not buying it, man. I don't. Ah, it, it's this. It, 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 whoever said it, I think it was Steve or, or Andy. It's the same thing. It's the same old, same old, same old. And it, it, it it's 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 a broken record, things, man. Mm. It's fucking broken. Excuse my language, but I'm just pissed off, man. It's broken record, things, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not club, too man. sure whether to believe the Barsley rumor. I mean, it sounds a little bit. Far fetched, but let's have it right. We have signed players before that were, Arbaloa. yeah, Arbaloa, Evra. You know, we've we've signed players of that ilk before. So do you know what? Caleri. It, it, I couldn't say that that it's it, it. They haven't got form for this. I really can't. So well, they have, haven't they? But I mean, the thing yes. is, if the if the transfer window is its customary disaster. You know the line that will come out from David Sullivan is... We oh, tried. We, really tr- we tried, yeah. Oh, now, yeah. D- now, let me take this scenario. Gatesy, you go into your job and mm-hmm. your boss comes to you and says, you haven't repaired a washing machine in six months. And you go, oh, but I tried. You'd get sacked, tried. wouldn't you? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it would happen a lot yeah. sooner than six months, in fairness. Yeah, yeah but six you know weeks. what I mean? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You know, but, uh, but no one knows what Gatesy does on the side. <laughs> 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 
I told you that in confidence. I told you that in confidence. Don't don't let my secrets go willy nilly. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it that's what really annoys me. You know, we tried. If I go into my job and don't achieve and say I tried, sorry, bye. There's the door. That's it. You've got yeah. to go in. You've got to have some measure of competence and success. I don't mm. think Golden Sullivan are bad people because being incompetent doesn't make you a bad person. But I certainly think they're incompetent. I certainly think Sullivan's incompetent. And that's the mm. problem. He may, he may have all these grand ideas and think he's doing the right thing, but I don't actually think he has the competence to run a football club. I, I think it's worse than that. I think he's not only incompetent, I think he's delusional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, absolutely. my my daughter, right, I'm going to tell you something. My daughter's got into watching, you know, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Big Nightmares. Libby, 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 yes. Libby, 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 Libby. Big up, Libby. So he goes into these restaurants and they're all struggling. They're on their ass and all the rest of it. And he goes in to try and turn them around. And, and you can see that the chef is not very good or doesn't give a shit or whatever. And the thing that they've always got in common is they've got someone at the very top, an owner, that is just delusional. They either cannot or will yeah. not see what the problem is. And a lot of the time it's them. Yep. And I just yep. look at, and I, and, and I, as you're saying it, I'm thinking, do you know what? That sounds exactly what I've seen my daughter watching, you know, people that are just sort of like, so they cannot see that the problem is staring them right in the, in the face when they're looking in the mirror. The problem is them. And I think that, yep. that David Sullivan is, is precisely that. I think he's, he's delusional to what the problem is, i.e. it's you, David. Um, and I just, I just think he, as you say, he's incompetent. I don't think, you know, once upon a time, I think he was probably a half decent chairman at Birmingham, maybe. Um, but you know, this is now the year twenty twenty one, and I don't, I, you know, I know we finished sixth last season, but I don't think that was as a result of anything he contributed. I think it was just a, a team effort from Moyes, the coaching staff. The yeah. players all coming together, being galvanised and get, having a certain amount of belief and a bit of luck. You need a bit of luck. You can't have 38 Premier League games and not have luck along the way. But I don't think that the sixth place fee finish was anything to do with the board at all. I think no, it was in spite of them, not because of them. Was it? There's there's another really interesting thing you throw into the mix. I agree entirely with what you said about Sullivan. But there is also a massive ego as well. Mm -hmm. There is the impossibility for him to see that he is anything other than the answer. And so you put those three together, you know... <laughs> And so it was ego, oh. delusional, and incompetent. Sounds like an ex-wife. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, but if you're incompetent and delusional, but you've got a huge ego and you believe in yourself, you're stuffed. Yep. Mm. You know, absolutely stuffed. 100%. I am the greatest in the world. It's like, no, you're not. No. <laughs> he thinks he's Muhammad Ali, but he ain't. Ooh, no, he, 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 th he thinks he's Muhammad Ali mixed with, like, Sugar Ray, mixed with, like, Marvin, ha Marvin Hagler. Like, he, he's he, he's in Mars, man. He's in Mars. And, like, yo, gold, like, gold is, like, he's on Pluto because, like, He's about to go there still. No disrespect, but Omar's about to go to Pluto still. And it's like Brady, she's on she's on a spaceship that everybody just agrees with her. Well the thing and, the thing is about Brady, oh the reason why God, I've not really said too much off, about dog. Brady. Off, Bra Brady at the end of it all, guys, she's just an employee of David Sullivan. David Sullivan oh. turns around and says, Karen, you're doing this, then Karen is doing it. Whether she likes it whether she doesn't. So yes, sir. I, kind yes, of, sir. 
Oh, yeah, no, I, I, this is why I've, I've, not, I've not really yeah, mentioned no, her no, at all going along. Because, things, Marzi. You get yeah. me. You get me. You get me, guys. She's, she's, just, she's just his puppet, if you will. She's yeah. his employee. Yeah. Yeah. He turns yeah. around and says, yeah. do this, Karen. And Karen says, yes, Mr. Sullivan. Job done, Mr. Sullivan. Right. I've got so, a scenario for everyone. Yeah? Go on. Go on. The owners go at the end of the season, but we yep. finish no, not below, not above 15th for the next four seasons. Would you take it? Nope. Let not me have a think all. on that. Just just not this point all. here, James not saying Gold all. could walk away. Uh, with respect, he's not going to walk away from a 35% shareholding of a club. Miles always says this. We are fucking massive. Let's build on this massive reputation and go on, man. We got this. Like, we got this. Like, sit below 15th. No, thank you. We're, we're, we're Champions League things now, Doc. And we're going to mm -hmm. keep on going to them things there because of Moyes and his backroom staff. Getting some new owners. If they, yo, stay, though, Pete, if they story, stay, If they stay, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. but, I but I tell you what, though. You you saying about Karen Brady being an employee it made me think if she is employed and Sullivan actually has the control, if I was in Sullivan's position, she wouldn't be writing that damn song column. You know, it, is that another yeah, song? But he's Sullivan? probably getting half the money. <laughs> oh, 100, 100, 100. Well, don't don't uh, forget. He can he can also influence what she writes though, can't he? It's an interesting it's an outlet, it's another outlet for him. He's got Jim White at Talksport yeah. that he drip feeds little bits of information to. He can drip feed yeah. little bits of information to Karen yeah. and she can put it in a, a little sun co column. It's it's all just sort of like propaganda, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's sickening, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it no, is he, he is an old man, James. You're right, he can't keep going forever, but he it will it will go to his daughters. It will go to his daughters. They'll you know it's it's a bit like David Sullivan. I think that that his plan, whether it comes to fruition, I think his plan is is to hand over the reins to his sons. You, yo, you know what, what can say, possibly go I wrong? I say, I say I say I say bring in Ted Lasso. Bring in Ted Bloodclot Lasso and manage our team, dog. Because, like, yo, with Sullivan, Gold, and Brady... Exactly doing, what it's, Epic's it's just a said. Joke. Yeah. It's a joke, bro. I, I, think, I, I, think, I think, to be fair, I think Jack Sullivan would, wouldn't, wouldn't be as bad as David Sullivan, though. He oh, would no, spend that really. money on anything. I, I can but see he's it. Learned, he's learned from the old man. Yeah, the but, apple doesn't but, fall but, far from the tree. But, 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 but what's the old you, man going to do? Thank you, David. Marsley's talking rubbish. Marsley's talking rubbish. <laughs> What will worry me with Jack Sullivan coming in? He's just a puppet for his dad. No, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think you. I'm. I'm not saying he's going to be like the best thing since sliced bread. But I don't think he'll be anywhere as bad as David. No, mm. I don't think he would. To be I think fair, it'd be worse. Interview. I think it'd be worse. Straight up, I think it'd be worse. Homeboys like Mister YouTube, like, oh, we'll watch this player, that player. When we get like ten Julian Faubers, Fo like. That's what we're doing here. You know what we're doing here, guys? We're comparing Kim Jong Il to Kim Jong Un. Not much of a comparison. <laughs> it's, like, it, it, it's like comparing Trump to his two dickhead sons. Like, it's the same thing. I hear you. 100, man. Leave, leave yeah. politics out of it, Peach. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it's me that brought it in. I never see politics <laughs> out of it, dog. Because, like, yo, they're so corrupt. And it's like, what West Ham's dealing with right now is so corrupt. Like, oh, no. No, thank a, you. A, a comment on what James well, said. Some you know, people. It's it's not even about owners with ambition. It's owners with a bit of realism. Yes. We need that actually look at it and say we can do this. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think I you. think we need to have owners with integrity. Yeah, Matt that's Hancock. Exactly. Matt Hancock. That's what I think Agreed. we need. Agreed. We need yeah. to have. And, and not, yeah, we could do. Could could have him. You know. No, but we need to have owners with, with integrity. You know, we need oh, to yeah, have an true. owner that, that says that says the truth and does the right thing, even when no one's around to watch. That's the definition of integrity. Yeah, we need you know we need someone you know with that. That, that. That's that, that's the Tony Cotty um, consortium. That's what that is. 
That's the Tony mm. Kachi uh, Consortium. That's what that is. And until that gets done, it's always going to be the same. But when that I'm, gets done, it's going to be a change, man, because Homeboy pleads Clarence and Blue through and through, man. Real thing. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. I'd, what I'd say is, who do we think the player and the other sporting stars are? I mean, my money's on it being Cotty. Yeah. Being the ex-West I don't. Player. I don't know if you've ever read a book that he did about, all five years ago. But he was involved in a roundabout way with the Icelandic takeover. Edgar Magnus things, yeah. In, in a ra- I've got the book upstairs somewhere, and, and Tony Cotty actually signed the inside cover. My best mate got it for me. And yeah, he he had he wasn't in so, he wasn't sort of like um involved in a negotiation or anything, but I think there were conversations that were had. I think Cotty sort of like might have pointed him in certain directions and whatever. Yeah. Um, I say he, he was involved at a distance. He was involved at a distance, according to this book that I've got upstairs that Tony Cotty um, wrote. I mean, but isn't that so, West Ham? I think at the time we were taken over, he was something. He was in the top ten richest men in the world. Takes yeah. us over and goes bust. You know, it couldn't happen to anybody else, could it? No, oh, yeah, it's always happened to us, wouldn't it? You know, if it, again, if it was a, if there was a club that you would say, right, you know, a Premier League club gets taken over by a multi, an Icelandic multi-billionaire involved in banking and investments and all the rest of it, yep. and then a couple of years' time, there's going to be a massive crash in Iceland, and which club do you th- think it will be that will be in the shit? Again, I think most people would say, do you know what? That sounds like a West Ham type of scenario. I tell you what, I bet you shake Mansur's please. You didn't buy West Ham. He'd be penny penniless by now, wouldn't he? <laughs> With oh. our track record. Oh. No, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, sort of like, I think, I think when you're talking that sort of money, I think yeah. they would absolutely make it work. But unfortunately, you know, we're, we're we're not looking at getting someone in at that sort of level, is it? Are we? We're sort of like, yeah, we'll we'll get someone a little bit lower down. Well, estimated wealth of Mansur is half a trillion dollars. You know, yeah, you could buy a lot of cups of tea for that, couldn't you? All the Leicester owners, as James has put there. I mean, you know, they've yeah. got a few bob. Maybe not not in the sort of like the Sheikh Mansur, Roman Abramovich category. But good God, look what they've done over the last five years. Oh, yeah. Premier absolutely. League winners, League um, FA Cup winners. They've, all right, you know, and I think they've only got into the Champions League once on the back of the Premier League win, but they've been close, uh, you know, the Leicester owners. And, and you know, the thing is, the fans love the owners. The, the, the owner that died in the, in the helicopter crash after the game against us and the guy, the, the son that's taken over, the fans love the owners. The owners love the fans. It's symbiotic. It's it's you know it all meshes. Yeah. You know they they really sort of like are one. They're you know the the team, the city, the fans, the everyone. Uh, d- you can't really say that about us, can you? Interesting thing about the Leicester owner that sadly passed away on his birthday. I believe he bought every. Or all the season ticket holders a pint at the bar. Well, I know that um, at Christmas he got them all um, mince pies, didn't he? Yeah, and I think he randomly selected say a hundred people and just paid for their season tickets. You know, I think mm, he did things. That's like true, that. Kent. Now, yeah. Yeah. Now that is, you know, for a man of his wealth, that's not a huge amount of money, but the goodwill mm. that generates. It's massive. And what, there is no attempt at generating goodwill with the fans. Nope. You know? Um, no. Nope. And it's it's silly little gestures like that that make all the difference, though, isn't it, Steve? Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. You, you, you turn up to the ground and you, you get something through and you say, oh, by the way, um, have a pint on us or have a mince pie and a bovril on us or whatever it is. Yeah, it's how, it, it, it's as you say, birth, it's those simple little gestures. Simple little gestures. I would even take a chicken bolty pie. What do we? Have, what have we ever got? What have we? Apart from the last game at the bowling ground, 
I can't ever remember being given anything. Anything. The Romans ever done for us, to quote a phrase. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, yeah, we don't. But we'll get a certain amount off in the shop because we're season ticket holders and things like that. But that's large shift merchandise they can't shift to anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's, let's get real about this. And, you know, I always buy my shirt at the end of the season because I know it's going to be half price. Yep. You know, and, and it's all those things, you know, make the home shirts a significant discount for the season ticket holders. You know, take a third off. That would that would make a big difference. You know, <laughs> stop bombarding me all the time with emails for this event, that event, the other event. Mm-hmm. Just say, uh, thanks for sticking your hand in your pocket and coming to support the side. <laughs> It's not rocket science. It's just, you know, managing people well and treating them with respect because they're your bread and butter. Don't know. Seems fairly obvious to me, but there you have it. Yeah. Did they give everyone an away an away game a Bobby Moore T-shirt? I, I, I don't know. Walshy that might have done, but you know, let's let's have it right. There's a big difference between giving. 3,000 away fans something and giving 54,000 home season tickets, you know, a, a free pint, you know what I mean? I, I know, if, I know, you know, if, if that happened, fair enough, I'm, I, I've got I've got no idea whether it I did or whether it did bag but... to do some banners for Bobby Moore, the, top, the Tottenham game, they gave us a bag to hold up so it read it out. Oh, okay. Bag. They gave us a bag. Oh. Yep. Okay. As opposed to every year giving us a pint giving us uh, like I say, I just think it's it's silly little gestures like that that make the difference and you get an awful lot of you know, investment from the crowd and they've never ever done anything like that to the best of my knowledge certainly not for the home fans other than, you know, like I say, the last game at the bowling, I remember turning up and there was a t-shirt there and this and that and yeah, fine but my t-shirt that, I can not even get over my armpit <laughs> That's why you're going to the gym, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, you, Andy, yeah. You, you know, when I go into a clothes shop, they say, what size do you want? I say, oh, three-man tent would ah. be nice. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, and everything, you know, I get freebies through occasionally, and, you, and they always come through in medium, and I think, I haven't got a chance of getting into that. Not a prayer. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. And and James makes the point there, and and so did Rob. Um, was it even the, the shirts? It was at a Liverpool game, the anniversary of Bobby Moore. Um, was it even, you know, Golden Sullivan that put their money in their pocket, or was it from the Bobby Moore fund? Or, you know, I don't know. I don't I'll know. tell you what. I, I must say, I feel so much better after talking to you. My week's going to be amazing now. Of course. <laughs> Always. Well, well I'm like a therapist. Service, Andy. Why, why is there? Why is there always fucking drama on a Monday and Tuesday? So you got three days of shit at work to get through as well. Why can't they do it on a Friday so you can go down the pub and drown your sorrows? Uh, you see, I was fairly chilled today, Andy, because I actually went out and played a decent round of golf, much to my surprise. So, uh, you know, I was I was quite chilled when all this news came. Do you want, out. Do you want to go and play now, Steve? I bet you might be a bit different. <laughs> Look, Andy, I, I tell you what, with the arthritis and stuff, when back in the 30s, I used to play in sort of a lower a lower tier Essex level. I come out now, I play around the golf, and I can barely move after it. My joints are so stiff and everything. So actually playing well is a big surprise these days. Um, and just to add, thank you for the two new subscribers, people. Hey! Oh, what are we up there to we now, go. Andy? What four, 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 seven, four. I think. Yeah. Fantastic. Happy days. Happy days. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for everyone that's joined us. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. As I say, we've had a chat about the twos and throws between Mr. Um, cheers, James. Um, Mr. Sullivan's obviously disagreement with Mr. Beard. Um, obviously, like I say, I, I'll say it again. Someone is lying. Now, who's your money on? Well, I can't really comment about Philip Beard 
But for me, we've been lied to quite a bit by Mr. Sullivan. So look mm, into my eyes, can't you see? I'm leaning towards him. I'm leaning Would towards I lie him to you, baby? with regret. Would I lie to you? <laughs> He would. He would. Yes. Please, no I he can would. do Andy. Please. No. <laughs> no, God, for goodness uh, sake. Listen. I'm going to I'm the gym. Go- I'm going to I'm going to the gym anyway. You are. You are. You're gonna to go to the gym and you're gonna burn off all of those excess pies or whatever. But the thing is we're then you're you're then gonna meet up with me on Friday. That's the plan anyway. We're gonna to go to Rush Green, hopefully watch the twenty threes play all the shot down. <laughs> and we'll probably get a kebab. Like we did last week. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but it was healthy. It had salad with it. Yeah. That's my yeah. that's my excuse. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm gonna roll the credits. I'm gonna end it there. Guys, thank you all for watching. Um anyone that hasn't already Cheers, done everyone. so please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. As always, thank you very much indeed for your support. Tell your friends that we're here. And until next time, I'm going to sign off. Only one thing left to say, boys. Malsey, what do you want to say? We are fucking massive. We are. Steve, We are. what else do we want to say? you irons. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Stay safe, guys. Yeah, cheers.